Welcome back, disc golfers. My name is Kevin Jones, and I'm here with Luke Humphreys to present to you guys the 2020 Majestic. This is round one. We're now in the third nine because we're playing 27 holes, so we're in the third nine of the first round. Luke, how are you doing today? So solid, man. Coverage is brought to you guys by Prodigy, Blue Ribbon Pines, and Gotta Go, Gotta Throw. Like Kev said, this is the third nine. We're playing 27 holes. It's a full day. Guys have already played 18. You know, it's kind of like extra time or OT or whatever it is, you know. You gotta dig deep and finish strong. Yeah, digging deep is crucial at this course. It just seems like it never ends. Yeah, so we are playing an island hole here. Any shots missing the island go straight to a drop zone that is about 40 feet. We've got a right to left wind today. The hole's playing about 280. Um, and we're gonna see some guys attack. Yeah, right to left headwind is what we're seeing. Yeah, not much to be said. That's the greatest action that you could ask for off that tree. Yeah, that was gone. Yeah, it was, it was cruising left, probably OB, but I've seen that happen multiple times. Hit that tree and be safe. Yeah. So. That's good. He'll be right there and making the island. He's got a birdie putt. Yeah, you can see him shaking his head. He's, he's still looking to really get his stroke dialed. James isn't one to just take a gift and stop working A2 out of you. Yeah, A2, stable A2 there. Um, it, it, initially, I thought I swung it wide enough, but it wasn't the case. Uh, there's a lot of right to left and headwind that's just going to make my disc glide to the left. And I, I do. I go out of bounds there, and I have a... 40 footer 45 footer for a, a par now paul taking it even wider than you and catching green great nice. shot from him that was a raptor you know that's a full speed disc that's it's a great shot well played yeah like a nine speed and he did he learned he uh learned off of my shot made a correction on his line and kale looking to do the same thing with the new fx2 that had to look good that was great. It did look good from the tee. And he even corrected more so safe and a perfect shot. Yep. See your drop zone putt here. 40-45 across the creek. Okay. Yeah. Drilled. That's, That's a great putt to make there. Man, that is. You've missed the green on what you know you consider to be a birdie hole under most conditions. Full extension. Slight headwind on the putt. It cruises just high enough. Dead center. Great putt. Keep your momentum going. Running it out. Letting your competitors continue. Stoked on that one, huh? Yeah, that's a big putt there. Staying at seven down. Gives me room to attack on these last eight holes. Yeah, that's huge. Oh, Ulubar here. Safe off of his drive. This is a birdie putt. 43 people were able to get the birdie on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, one of them. We did have 48 out of bounds, though. And you were one of four people to save the par from the out of bounds. 48 people off the tee went out of bounds. Nearly half the field. That's a lot. And everybody is running that putt. It's probably just a really tough wind. Be a great putt to make. Oh my God. No way. And so, oh, that... Off the top out of bounds. Big mistake right there from Conrad. And he's had some putting problems so far in this round. Uh, in that case, though, that that's that's no good. No, nah, not very normal from James. There we go. Kale jumping back on the birdie train. Good yeah. for him. Kale's had a slight roller coaster of a round. He was at seven down at one point. Is that right? Yeah. Seven down at one point. Through, through 11 holes. Through 11. So he was shredding, in other words. And slowed down, took some bogeys, but I think he's at four under right now. <laughs> Hanging it wide kind of gives you the uh, the feeling that it might not come back, but thankful yeah. that it did. He's moving back up. You're at seven. Um, setting yourself up nice for a, a good finishing stretch. Um, yeah. A very birdieable finishing stretch for you guys. Here's one of the longer holes you'll face during that stretch. Wide open, 440. I kind of think it plays more like 470. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd almost agree with you. It's like 450. It, it's like, it's it's a big crush to get there. 
Um, not many people can reach on a pure hyzer. Um, we're dealing with a right to left kind of headwind here, so it's important to swing it wide. Wider? Yuli does not swing it wide enough. So this hole actually has really interesting wind action because there's that huge right to left that we feel off the tee right there. But the basket's pushed up in that huge line of trees. So once you actually start getting closer to the trees, the wind isn't as, in, as like as much in play anymore. So it doesn't affect your disc. Kale looked like he played it perfectly there. And it was really well played, but that wind wasn't there at the end of the flight to give it that extra push to the basket. Yeah. So he's 30 feet right, really good read. Nice shot. Yeah, that's that's well said. One of the intricacies of these holes out here at Blue Ribbon Pines when we're playing through the the middle hallway area that's well open. What are you throwing here, Kev? That's my purple D2, my favorite hyzer distance driver. Wow. Nice action on the ground there. Yeah. Most people can't throw the pure hyzer. That was the pure hyzer. See if James can do it. He's got a wraith in hand. This tee box is 25 feet long. James needs more. That's a rip. Looks so good. Too straight. But it is, it is. Man, with James's power, he got pin high so fast. Luckily, it kind of kicked himself out, though. Yeah, if he went in, into those trees, he would not have a clear line whatsoever at the basket. This is at least a run for birdie. Off. James's putting stroke just looks a little bit shaky right now. It's not as pure as we're used to seeing. Yep. Yep. Paul got himself to 42 feet for this bid. Goes to his pitch spinner. And that's a weird spot, too, because sometimes the wind's getting around there and he's facing it, and other times it's not really there. Mm. Thought he was going to drill that one. Yeah, not leaving it short. Tells you that he really wanted it. Didn't even bother with the tree. Still threw his hyzer putt. I was thinking he was going to have to throw the Annie. That's a calm and collected putt from Yuli right there. It's one of my favorite parts about his game. Yeah, he threw his second well past the hole left with a circle's edge and facing he, the crowd looking at everybody doesn't bat an eye puts it down hole 20 had 20 birdies um brent waters and austin hannum the only two players in the field to park it shout Parking out to this those guys special it's very difficult to park this hole so yeah you smashed it and you did it accurately Because there was nothing in the way, it did play under par. I think it was just the amount of birdies and the lack of bogeys. It's just right there in front of you. Even guys who can't reach it aren't taking bogey for the most part. And you continue your move. So that was a stroke on the card there. Yep, big. Setting yourself up nice coming down the stretch. shot last year first round yeah i shot last year first round was awesome for me it was a hot one i remember something like 15 16 one day yeah i think it was so you're a little maybe behind maybe better a little behind that pace but i think it's a windier day some slight changes to the course and, you know just another year different for sure. challenges for sure all the holes will be playing differently a year later there's no doubt 10 down is a respectable score out here, in my opinion. And this is a hole I really like. Oh, oh yeah. come on. my yes. goodness. Yeah. Lavender X1 is that flick that I just like to hammer flat. It does an insanely good job at just staying straight. And I just have to rope that one. 
And I, what did you do on that hole in practice? I actually aced that one in practice. It's ridiculous. Hole 21 comes in at half a stroke over par. One of the hardest holes to birdie on the course. Kev, you're ridiculous, man. One of my favorite aces for sure. Uh, the key on this hole is to beat the gap. That's goal number one. But there's also a creek out there. So if you catch some tree or, or something or don't get full distance, you could end up OB in that creek, which is pretty much a, a bogey for you. Yeah, it for sure is. It's got to get out clean. If it just barely nicks something and takes the speed off, there's high bushes in the creek that'll grab it, drop it down, and you're left with a pretty obscured 80-footer for your par save. Nice play from Kale there, getting out in the open. Yeah. And from Conrad, pretty much mirroring it. Wow. Rock three out of James. Whoa. Ridiculous. He lost his go-to purple rock three in practice, so that's a brand new one he's throwing. That was the second time he threw it. He already knows it. Very nice. That's tough to do, but James is so talented, he can adapt really quickly to something like that. Good bid there. Yeah, pretty decent long bid from Yuli. Was his shot, I wonder if his drive was out of bounds. I don't think it, I think it was short. Okay, hope so. Kale just off again. He's been so close at so many moments this round. Great birdie from James. See those spectators out there just grabbing some grass. Man, what a great place to sit and observe from some disc golf out here at Blue Ribbon Pines. Just, it is. Just an amazing piece of property. If you haven't been here, I can't say it enough. You just gotta come at least once. It will live up to expectations. That's right. It's one of the most legendary courses in the United States easily. Great putt from you. I mean, two birdies on that hole is fantastic. Yes, it is. Nobody parked it. It was one of two holes on the day that nobody parked. <laughs> wow, no park jobs. What was the birdie percentage? Like, is there a bunch of birdies on the home? There was 12 birdies. 12 so birdies out of 100 plus players. 107 players. Wow. Yeah. Played hard. That was a great little slow-mo of you lacing that forehand. Yeah, that was another crucial tee shot moment. Very important to get out the gap, otherwise you could uh, add a couple strokes to your score pretty easily. Now we have hole 22, which is just a gorgeous and brilliant hole. It's like such an ideal disc golf hole. It's, it's, yep. it's so perfect. Yep, agreed. The distance is championship level. You have to clear this water right here. You know that if your disc goes in there, it's gone for the round, possibly forever. Yep. They do an, a great job at BRP of fishing discs back, but you're not going to get it back that day. That's for sure. That's true. That's, that's leaking good. right. But it's long enough. Distance is key. Yep. Yep. That's a good, uh, you just want to pound it. Long is definitely the play. And the, one of the best parts about this hole, I think, is that you can't actually see the hole. You know where it's at, but just that blind aspect of it makes it a little bit harder. 100%. James throwing that same rock three. Mm. So I did a I did a bunch of practice rounds with James and he consistently was hugging that left side. Uh, that was a very similar shot that I saw in practice. No harm, no foul though. It looks like he'll take a par there. Yeah, and possibly have a long bid. Sure. Yuli, understable fairway driver. That's gotta be the heat. That must be the heat from him, which uh, for me is such a difficult shot to execute. I think that was a very high level shot from Yuli there. Yeah, he slid that heat up in a practice round. Oh, nice. He's got the Heiser flip game well dialed. One of the best players in the world at that. Looks like an M4 out of Kale. It is, this is the money M4. Laser straight. It's the more overstable M4 of the two that he has been throwing. Okay. I don't know if he's thrown this one in the round yet, but it's definitely a good disc for this hole. Looks to have stayed out. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be giving this one a bid. Do it. Oh my. You can't. Stop. No. Stop. What? Through the rock? I'm in as much shock as Kale. Yeah. Hats off to Kale. He's 
he's there there can't be enough said about how how good of a guy he is and great of a competitor he is out on the course he takes it like a champ that was just brutal one of the most raw kick rolls i've ever seen yeah only because he gave it a bid at the end of the day a lesser player would have missed the basket entirely and wouldn't have to deal with that out of bounds that's a good point man james conrad just a little bit low there off his jump putt Yuli has a chance here. This would be a nice stroke. This is my. This might be where he goes for any jump, but no, flatter and just a little too high. Man, that felt like a good opportunity for him to kind of start pushing for the. Yeah, for the finish. Unfortunate. You, right of the green, great spot to putt from. Just, mm, yeah, I'm not terribly disappointed at that. It was about circle's edge. Great putt from Kale. Wow. Compose himself, realize that these are round objects and occasionally they do stupid things. And, <laughs> you know, put it behind you. Yeah, man. That was uh, ugly to watch from Kale there. It, it's so hard to imagine a disc being able to roll over the rocks and then into the water. And, it's costly, but the way that he uh, composed himself, like you said, and knocked down that 20, 25 footers, the reason that he is rated what he is and yep. why he's respected as much as he is. For he, sure. He is a legend around Minnesota. It pushes him back to three down. Just crazy to see a player of his caliber take some raw kicks and you know throw a couple bad shots, but get penalized for them and in, end up so many strokes behind the pace that he was starting on. It was, Felt like a course record round type of deal, you know? Yeah, the for start was, was course record potential, and that's BRP for you. It's just a war out yep. here. It'll give them, it'll take them. We got a tight one here, hole 23. Um, something less than full speed. This is a short hole. You're going A2. I think this is the perfect shot shape here. A2 shapes this hole really well. You have one tree to beat, and that's the tree. If you can go right around that tree, it's money, and so a lot of people opt for like something with a hard flare at the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You almost put a little ante on that. Something with a force over out of the hand, stabling up quick is best play. I think James is going with a gator here. Oh, yeah. And does he beat the tree? Oh, yeah, he does. Simmer, and that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. That's the shot, and what a cool little hole it is. It's a very specific shot that you have to execute, and it's very fair. Oh yeah, <laughs> just another one down the pipe. That's right. A little long. James's gator hooked up a little bit quicker than Yuli's disc did. Might have been a slightly more overstable disc from James. Yeah. There is that inside the tree gap, too. You can get sneaky. Looked like he shook a little tree there. You running? I am. I'm trying to just kind of like float something up there so that I don't have too hard of a comeback putt. Mm -hmm. But I, I really wanted at least a chance at birdie there. Yuli, a little obstructed. You can tell he's annoyed. Yep, he's a little uncomfortable here. This is from 25 feet, it looks like. Oh, and that was for even par as well for Yuli. Gonna stay right above par for now. And not the par putt put that you wanted coming back. No, and oh talk about goodness. uncomfortable. Yeah, it was like a step through almost. Yeah, there, there wasn't... Or a sidestep, I Yeah, see. it was a sidestep. Like, there's just so much to deal with there. Some little yeah. leaves in my way and stuff. Yeah, plus the tree, it looked like. Unfortunate to end up in a, a weird position like that, but this is a very wooded green. And a lot of players um, found themselves in a the position like that as well. Yeah, that's totally what I get, though, for, for running that big, long putt. Yeah, 28 birdies, 33% of the field got into circle one in regulation, 56 into circle two. That hole played just over par, 0.07 strokes over par. Okay, pretty average hole. You see 
you drop back one, James gain another one, and you know, James was two over after like the front nine of this round, so he's pushing big time on this back half. Fun to see, he's yeah. getting himself back into contention. If he really pushes it, I, I suppose he might be able to make a push for lead card. Easily, easily. There's still uh, four or five more birdie holes left for James, or four holes, I think, so. This one right here, though, not much danger on the hole. There's the OB Creek, but I don't believe any of these guys will be even close to that OB Creek. I, yeah. I'm actually interested to know if anybody landed in that OB Creek all weekend. But it, might, it probably happened. James is dialing it back just a bit, going Thunderbird. There's a left-to-right wind that's going to hold his disc fairly straight. And this hole, along with hole 8... Both baskets were changed to Kobe baskets. He had the two numbers, as most people know. Legend in the game. Um, and Ray pay paying respect to Kobe and his greatness by adding those in. Pretty baskets. They stand out. Um, it's a cool little touch. It's a sweet touch to the course. It looks really nice. It looks epic when you're playing it. 750 D1 out of Kale. Need some push from the wind. It looks like it's headed right to the pin. Yeah. Yeah, that's a park job. That's the 3,422nd time he's parked that hole. <laughs> Real stats. Yeah, really? What is this, the Cat D1? That's the Cat D1. Just making sure I hit it really hard. Mm-hmm. And I did. Mm-hmm. Just inside circle? Maybe, circle's edge. This is this is a big putt right here for Yuli. Like it'd be nice to get to even par for him. I'm sure he wants that. Mm. Some wind and stuff to deal with there. Yep, definitely a wide open basket. Tends to have some breezes. Yeah, it's for sure a headwind. Yeah, right you're here. dealing with right to left headwind right now. Yes. And you're going to your spinner, your push spinner. Dude, you've been getting good at that. You're usually a straddle putter, almost always if you can pick it, but into some of these headwinds lately, you've been switching your stance up and it's been working. Yeah, so lately, anytime I've started to feel a little bit uncomfortable with those little crosswinds, I opt to spin putt instead, and so my disc doesn't get affected as much and it's more of a straight line. Yeah. It has come in handy quite a bit. It's nice to lean on it sometimes. Yeah, something to note. People watching at home, even Kev, who's the most proficient straddle putter out there, maybe along with Nate Sexton or something, you know, he's still switching up his stance when he feels like it's going to benefit him. Um, yeah, worth noting. It's all about getting the disc into the basket. We got to use the wind to get the disc in the basket sometimes too. Yep, well put. James tapping in his birdie. Slow-mo shot of the... Smooth master himself, Kale Visca, also grabbing a bird. Yeah, the park job there. It was a great drive from Kale. James didn't get the birdie. That's my bad. Nope, James' putt was low. on to hole 25 uh three holes left luke yep and you want them all and you want them all that's so true this one is a straight putter for the most part uh probably gonna opt for like a more stable putter over stable putter yep uh but the right side of the fairway is the open side once you start leaking left you start falling into some trees and that you got to get greasy around yep most of those trees leave you about 40 Kale throwing a Spectrum PA3 here. Wow. And showing us how it's done. Beautiful shot. I mean, no doubt about it. There's the snack shack right next to this one. Tends to get a lot of spectators. People gather here. It's a great spot to observe. Coming down the stretch, trying to finish strong. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, my goodness. Very, very greasy line there. All right, we're averaging eight feet away from the basket so far. It's pretty good. So that wasn't the intended line there, but it worked out very nicely for myself. That's going to be actually, that's going to secure a 10 under for the round, which is a good spot to, to be at. Nice head spot. Yep, get yourself in double digits. James, throwing one of those aviers. Yeah. Kind of getting a double kick, ending up on that top shelf, which is huge. Yes, common spot to land right there, just over the top shelf after hitting those trees. Very makeable putt. It looks like too much hyzer, but it can filter. And does. Wow. There's a little opening there that people can get in and out of easily. Looks like he's found it, and it's a wide open putt. All right, here we go, Yuli again. This is Yuli putting for even par, so. Let's go, bub. Big putt. There we go. Let's go. Pretty flat. Went with the stepper. Yep, that was flat to hyzer. Mm. Just before the foot comes down, he releases it. Perfectly done. There's always something nice about getting back to even. No matter where you are on the course, nobody enjoys being over par. No. Deep breath. Birdie the next two. Finish it two down. You know. There you go. Live to fight another day. James. A little high right. Stays. Good for him. Yeah. James turning his slow start into a... Very solid round. Yep. Also grabbing your birdie, getting to 10. Like you said, big deal. Have you looked at U-Disc at all at this point? Do you know what the competitors who finished in front of you have done? At this point, I believe I have looked at U-Disc. Um, the next two holes are, especially this next one, is a very routine birdie for most people, so it doesn't really change much of your thought process I'd say right. but it can affect uh, the last hole yeah for sure which coming we'll in to. yeah coming in 27 you know good to know where you're at especially if there's going to be people filming and there were obviously yep like you said hole 26 comes in as the 26th the easiest hole on the course um, it's a pretty easy tee shot and you're left with this tiered green which is gorgeous Ray did a great job of creating um, just a little something special and unique here on 26 that gives players a different look. Yeah, the green is outstanding. Looks so gorgeous sitting there. And this shot right here... Yeah. Yeah, okay, Caleb took some awful action there. But this shot is a really small hyzer. It's not far at all. You, you can't overpower it or you'll push too far straight and into the trees. Totally. Theoretically, you could throw like a very short putter and then like a slightly longer putter and play the hole perfectly. I hit similar trees as Kale, but both of us can work something from there. Yep, you're inside 300, like you said, throwing a putter. Um, it's, it's really just about the second shot. This is a total placement shot here. James going Firebird, maybe trying to skip something? Yeah, indeed. Yes, he is. Okay. Nice. Very effective play right there. Yeah, it gets past those trees. He'll have nothing in his way. I'm guessing we see old Grainy come out. Probably. Paul. A ringer. Oh, but that looks low. And not enough turn. With it being low and with not enough turn, just too far straight, and he's going to be pinched. Maybe OB. Possibly OB. Yeah, there is OB lining that right side of the fairway. Also the left side of the fairway. Worth noting. Okay. So there's a left to right wind down there. I'm trying to just kind of play it. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, inside the circle. Well inside the circle. Up just an uphill putt. Yep, just an uphill putt. Kale, maybe a little force over. Is he going with that? Yep, more stable spectrum, PA3. Looking for it to hook up. Just don't hit the rocks. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, distance control is very nice there, which gives him a pretty routine putt. Oh, wow. This is very pinched off. 
Nice okay. camera angle, though. We'll see what he's attacking. So he's got to force it over and then let it come back out? Yeah, if he's trying to birdie it. I don't think Yuli is ever laid up. I don't. This has got to be aggressive. So going for the bigger gap. Okay. That's a good shot. Yeah. If it had more height and was allowed time to flex out, I, he may have gotten a skip and been 40 feet. I think he's about 60 now. Yeah. He's a little further than that, I think. Further. He yeah. could have probably snuck up to like 40, 50, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Right. But it's aggressive as well. You could cost yourself a stroke by doing that. This hole is annoying, though, because everybody wants to get a three on it. It seems so easy. Right. But at the same time, we've got the elevated basket, and we have OB on both sides of the fairway. So it has teeth. Don't let it fool you. And you've got to bring the speed in right. Can't be hitting those rocks hard and rolling backwards. I mean, all, all kinds of things can happen if you bring the speed in too hot. Uh, short for me, but luckily on film, that looks like a much longer putt than I thought it was. <laughs> It felt like a 20 footer to me. It's substantially uphill, especially from the back side of the green. Nice putt, Kale. And Conrad for birdie as well, going for seven under par. Good for him. Nice, a little bit of footing trouble, no problem for James. And he's been on a tear these last few holes. Good to see him come back strong. Wasn't doubting it, just waiting for it to happen. Hole 26, 26 the easiest. We had 44 birdies on this hole. Only five people found the out of bounds and 58% of the field was in circulation, circle one after regulation. Nice. Thanks Luke for all the great stats and thanks to UDISC. This is the first event since COVID that's using the UDISC platform. We all as players love it. You all as fans love it. If you don't have it, go get yourself logged in on udisclive.com. For sure. Yep. Shout out to the Minnesota crew. Um, they do an awesome job of getting stats for us, all different kinds of stuff, plus letting amateurs track all their rounds and post straight to Facebook. Really cool app. Get it if you don't have it. Coming to the finishing hole, the island hole, hole 27, Kev. Yeah, this hole's epic. Small island green. We have a huge headwind here. Pressure's on. It's pretty much, are you going to get on safe for a short birdie putt or? That's it. And it does. Short birdie putt. I saw that live. I couldn't believe he threw an FX2. Yeah, it, it, not a disc I would ever reach for on a hole like this. Yeah, he's just so touchy. The man is so smooth. He put the angle exactly where it needed to be with that headwind right to left. Um, and he'll have a putt for birdie. Yeah, it's cool to see the different plays because Kale wouldn't throw the disc if it wasn't the highest percentage of being safe. He's not throwing it for fun. He's throwing it because he, he trusts it the most. So it's cool to see the FX2 is great to rely on for Kale. And it is a great disc. Yep, well said. Fantastic shot from James. Slides it on. He never even crossed over OB, did he? No, no. So if you don't know, the path leading to the basket that we walk on is safe. So James was directly over the path the whole time there. I am, I've got my KJ USA PA3 here. Great looking shot. Go in. Wow. Distance is so key. And that was perfect. Great, Great way to end your round. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be posting an 11 at that point. That's right, I, I can't complain at all. 11 down is gonna be just fine out there. Yuli looking to grab a birdie on the way in as well. Go in, go in. Did he say go in right he did, out of his hand? He did, it, which it looked really good. Oh my goodness. With some good wind action, that could have been running it, running right by the chains, no problem. It has so many aces on film, it's crazy. Um, it's not even surprising to hear him call for one like that. Nice and Kale, nice. Finishing off round one of the 2020 Majestic with a birdie. And also the whole card, the whole feature card here, looks like they're going to be birding the, la the last hole. Good on him. Great putt. You know, decent catch from the basket, but he put it up there nice. Yep. Fun to see him finish strong. You know, with 27 holes in this next round, seven under... You know, four behind you, 
not totally unfathomable that Kale can get himself back into this. Yeah, it's anybody's game. It's 27 holes. That's what's so unique about this tournament. In the woods, nothing's given to you. Blue Ribbon Pines will take it 56 out of bounds on this hole. 56 out of bounds and 107 people. That is over half the field going out of bounds. What was the handicap on that? Third hardest hole. Third hardest hole in the course. The last hole you play, something crazy could happen on that hole in the final round. We've got a great battle. It's anybody's game. Here are your final scores of your feature card, guys. Thank you so much for joining Parsave Productions coverage of the 2020 Majestic Open presented by Prodigy Disc. Huge thanks to Prodigy for uh, sponsoring this coverage for us. And thank you guys for joining us for round one. Luke, thanks for your time as well. Glad to be here, man. We'll see you guys for the final round. Yeah, come check it out.